He drank alcohol, was madly in love with his manager, and died under strange circumstances. With this description, we could be talking about the life of some famous rock star. But no. It is the life of Jumbo, the most famous elephant in history that inspired the Disney film. He existed in real life, and his life was not easy at all. The real elephant was captured in Abyssinia, Africa, in 1861, when he was about a year old. His life was plagued with pain from the moment of his capture. It is said that the hunters, upon coming across his mother, began throwing spears at her until she was killed. Once dead, they extracted the tusk to sell the ivory, and they took the baby, which remained terrified next to the corpse. After a few years in Paris, he was exchanged in 1865 for a rhinoceros with the London Zoo. At that time, having an African elephant and one so large was a rarity. The zoos had many Asians, smaller in size, and whom they considered docile. However, African elephants had a reputation for being violent and rebellious. Even so, the director of the London Zoo, Abraham Bartlett, wanted it at all costs, even though the animal was in terrible condition. Bartlett put Matthew Scott in the care of the elephant, who became his caretaker and gave him the name Jumbo, which means hello in Swahili. He didn't have much experience and was a man as lonely as the elephant. To gain his trust, he didn't hesitate to sleep with him in the cage for six months, creating an emotional bond between the two that would only be separated by death. Scott got Jumbo to heal and obey his instructions. In return, the pachyderm was unable to stay away from its caretaker for long. Scott would tell of their relationship in his memoirs, but today we know that the love that Jumbo felt for his caretaker is not unusual among elephants because they are tremendously social animals and need to constantly interact with others of their species. They found a partner for Jumbo, named Alice, but the animal preferred the company of its caretaker. He became the zoo's biggest claim and was nicknamed the King of the Elephants. His fame occurred at the same time that the invention of photography was in full swing, so everyone wanted to take photos on the back of the animal who spent the entire day supporting the weight of hundreds of people a day. Many famous people climbed on Jumbo in his childhood, including Winston Churchill and Theodore Roosevelt, as well as child members of European royal houses. Because of the considerable attention it received from the press, it became extremely popular throughout Britain. Everyone was excited about Jumbo. So much so, that they gave him all kinds of gifts, such as feeding him cakes. But years later, problems began. Jumbo's behavior changed. It is believed that their living conditions greatly influenced this. He didn't allow anyone other than his caretaker to approach him, and he became considered a dangerous animal. He hadn't behaved violently with the public, since during the day he was kind and docile with all the people who climbed on top of him. However, at night, in his compound, he became angry. He broke the fences and smashed his fangs against the bars. One of those nights, he even broke his fangs. When these began to grow again, due to the stress he suffered, he got into the habit of rubbing them against the walls to wear them out. Then, Scott gave him high doses of whiskey, which apparently was the only thing that calmed him down. And it really worked for him. The elephant ended up drunk and forgot what caused his anger. The zoo director gave an erroneous explanation for that violence. He said Jumbo was approaching 20 years old and his hormones were completely raging with heat. He claimed that there was no one else who could dominate him, only Scott, and that he constantly demanded that he raise his salary. However, elephant experts say that that was not the reason since if so, the elephant would also have attacked his caretaker, and he never did. The most likely reason for those attacks was found in his teeth, because the diet he had at the zoo with so many cakes had nothing to do with what his body needed. His teeth had grown with malformations, which caused him immense and terrible pain. Therefore, it behaved that way. The animal went crazy without anyone being able to take away his suffering. 
Fearing that there was a possibility that the elephant would attack the audience, a weapon was prepared at each presentation. If Jumpo attacked, the order was to shoot. So given these circumstances, the zoo decided that it was best to sell him. The person who bought him was an American circus magnate, Phineas Taylor Barnum. Surely the name will be familiar to many of you because the movie The Greatest Showman tells part of his story. Jumbo was sold for a very high figure, almost as if it were a soccer star. The British didn't agree, they made it a national offence. Every night, thousands of Londoners crowded into the zoo to say their last goodbye to Jumbo and showed him their love. A fund was even created to buy back the animal from Barnum and it was said Queen Victoria herself showed her displeasure with the decision made by the London Zoo. Jumbo, very much in character, refused to enter the box that was to transport him to the United States and only entered when they agreed to let his carer, Scott, travel with him. When it finally arrived in New York, Barnum paraded it down Broadway so that Americans could admire that a specimen that he had managed to take from the all-powerful British Empire. Barnum had become a magnate with the exposure of the so-called freaks or strange beings. At that time, it included several shows that would be impossible to imagine today. Bearded women, people with malformations, conjoined twins, etc. He took advantage of anyone who was different from others and saw a good opportunity to make money. Jumbo's arrival was announced on large, full-color posters that read Jumbo, the largest animal in the world. Obviously, that wasn't true. Jumbo was much larger than normal, exceeding 3 meters. But Barnum was not interested in reality at all, and very interested in a spectacle. Jumbo was portrayed on posters in which he was compared to the insignificance of human size on a completely unrealistic scale. The elephant and 20 others of its kind also crossed the Brooklyn Bridge to demonstrate the reliability of that great work of engineering. In 1883, the famous New York Bridge was inaugurated. Many doubted its resistance being such a large and long bridge. Then the authorities thought of the animals from Barnum Circus to test him. Thus, Jumbo was one of the 21 circus elephants that paraded through the new construction. With that demonstration, the bridge was publicized and cleared up doubts about its solidity and reliability. Although they traveled from city to city by train, Barnum Circus, which included other elephants, relieved Jumbo of the loneliness that had depressed him so much during his stay in London. Barnum realized he had an elephant that couldn't juggle. But just with the presentation of the enormous animal, he managed to attract several million people. And again, he was used to transport spectators from one place to another. However, cruel fate stood in the way of the poor elephant. It was 1885 and the circus had ended up in St. Thomas, a Canadian town. The animals were already in their cages, ready to leave. The only thing missing was Jumbo and Tom Thumb, a dwarf elephant who performed with him. Unfortunately, a freight train came down the tracks in their direction and the trainer was unable to move the animals to safety. The locomotive crossed into Jumbo's rear, causing him to fall to its knees and it took 15 minutes for him to die from internal bleeding. The circus director invented stories after his death as a hook to attract the public. One of them, the most popular, was that Jumbo had died heroically by pushing his little dwarf companion away from the train track at the last second, when the locomotive was about to reach him, and he died in his place. And that after the collision, he lived long enough to, in his last breath, hug his carer Scott with his trunk. What is confirmed to be real is that Scott mourned the death of his great friend for a long time. Later, the owner of the circus hired Henry Ward, a taxidermist, to stuff him and show him dead, as he assured that he would earn more. If I can't have Jumbo alive, I'll have Jumbo dead, and Jumbo dead is worth more than a small herd of ordinary elephants. Barnum told the New York Times in September 1885, 
and he got a double benefit. On the one hand, he exhibited his skeleton in a museum, and with the stuffed corpse, he created a traveling show that was very successful. When the taxidermists began to work, they discovered that Jumbo kept one last surprise inside. There was money in his stomach. His trunk has sucked up to 300 coins that his admirers gave to his caregiver to climb on top of him. The study of his bones revealed that the elephant suffered from malnutrition and tremendous stress. Due to having carried children and adults for so many years, his hip bones were covered in poorly healed lesions that must have been extremely painful. And his knees looked like those of a 50 or 60 year old elephant, and not those of a 24 year old. But it is likely that Jumbo's life had more difficulties that couldn't be recognized by his bones. At that time, elephants were victims of terrible mistreatment in circuses. To force them to do their tricks, training methods based on punishment were used, which usually consisted of hitting, prodding, and even electric shocks. His death unleashed the myth of Jumbo, the superstar. Anyone who has gone to a restaurant in the United States will have seen the word Jumbo on the menu, which has become synonymous with large. Jumbo shrimp, Jumbo sausages, even in other countries, this adjective has been adopted as a synonym for superior size. And then came fiction. Helen Averson wrote Dumbo in 1939. It was a poorly distributed children's story, but it still reached the hands of Walt Disney, who turned it into the famous animated film in 1941. Other versions would follow later, such as the famous one by Tim Burton in 2019. All of them tell the story of an animal with a heart as big as its size, happy to make young and old happy. Although Jumbo's real life was far from that friendly story that the movies present to us. How many of you knew his story? We read you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode.